the, when we, as we recruit the storytellers, we might run into these kind of cases. And, and the sexual abuse happens to a lot of people beyond our imagination. <laughs> we cannot detect by just looking, by just the achievement. Or and are you thinking you may not even know that's what was going to come into the story? Right, right. And it, it might hit, it might touch a very soft spot. Mm -hmm. That's another risk. That's why I say, let it be. Let, let them do whatever they feel comfortable. Don't force them. Don't, don't even encourage. <laughs> Sometimes we, we might chase the stories, chase the point, say, hey, you missed this part. Say, say more about this. If we try once, they, they still run around. It's just there you go. Because <laughs> it might be something they try to hide. And, and we have to let them run it at their own pace feel comfortable. As long as they feel comfortable with us, sooner or later they will disclose. Because actually, what I believe is if you find a trustable person to disclose, it will help relieve <laughs> your burden. And, and in, a, in a psychotherapy situation, it, the more detail you get into, the more relief you get. <laughs> but, but people, it, it takes a, a lot of preparation, a lot of warm-up to get to that point. So I would say, do the brief part mm. at the beginning. And perhaps when they get into the real part, they don't want to be recorded. They can tell you, but they don't mm -hmm. be. That's fine, mm -hmm. we accept that. Because the, the burden is, if, if you want to write it down, you, you depend on the memory to write it down. But then, when you write a story, you, there's no rule saying that you have to reach a certain level of detail. Look at the story of Jesus. We don't have that much detail. Right? We have one detail that I share with people. That nobody pay attention to it. When Jesus break the bread to feed the 4,000 or 5,000, he tell the people to sit in row in a, in a number of session. I don't know any, any preacher preach on that special act. Mm -hmm. <laughs> About why? About divided into group and said, <laughs> keep, keep the crowd in order. No. No? I never heard of that. I mentioned that in, uh, in the Presbytery worship once. Mm -hmm. Remember you, you asked me to do the Presbytery Wednesday mornings? <laughs> yeah, when we did I mentioned that. I said, hey, that's, that's Presbyterianism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but that is still not a lot of detail. How did he tell the disciples to do that? I don't think disciples know how to do that. Yeah. How to put people in roles. In <laughs> Try to get the people from the back, give them up to the front, you know? Yeah. yeah. It takes military training. <laughs> 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 yeah, every story has something like that. <laughs> Somewhere. Unusual, we don't pay attention to it. Until someday, you say, wait a minute, how oh, come yeah. it's there? <laughs> One day you say, how come, how come it's there? there? And, and that particular story, the three Gospels carry that story, mm -hmm. and every Gospel mentioned that part about sitting in, mm -hmm. in rows in certain number of groupings. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, anyway, that, that's Jesus like good in decent order, too. Yes, yeah, he was Presbyterian. <laughs> 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 okay, is there any other, other question that bothers you? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I'm trying not to, to teach or coach or give instruction. I'm trying to, to use the workshop method. Say everybody work. Try to come up with something. You, you try at least one question and see how you get. 
Everybody pick one question. And make it a workshop. This, this is the method I'm trying to use, try to promote in a Sunday school. <laughs> Instead of giving instruction, everybody work. And I, I prepare questions ahead of time, or, or even marry it out ahead of time, and people can talk about it. And I try to do this based on the sermon. So after we listen to the sermon, we go to the Sunday school classroom, we talk about, we deal with the question that's raised from the sermon. Are these, are these the questions you're wanting us to look at? Yeah, like any question, the, the, the four pages of questions. Some of them funny, some of them serious. <laughs> and you just pick either the top one, or the middle one, or the last one. Let me... Give you one, this one. I don't know. <laughs> it will be a big burden to maintain collections of personal stories in the congregation. Do you agree? I, I, I agree it would be a big burden. It would be a massive, chaotic mess if proper logistical planning and training <laughs> are not done so, in advance. So what's the burden? The volume? What is the bur What would be the burden? Yeah. The burden of keeping the correction of the story. Uh, what would be the burden? Well, I don't know. Burden maybe is the correct word. Um, you have to have someone designated to do it, uh -huh, responsible need, for taking yeah. care of that task. <clears throat> you have to designate people, operator. In, in, I think in uh, my congregation, that would probably be the biggest issue at this point, is that it, it could easily go to the minister. I, I believe it, it, it's true in every congregation. Every time you have a new work, it's a burden. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I have learned that it's also an opportunity, yeah, especially for the young people, for the student, say, hey, you get to learn something that you will be using in your job. <laughs> when you get out of the school and get a job, yeah. this ability will give you ahead of others. You have the experience of managing a big collection. Would you so learn? it's a matter of finding those who are moved and or inspired. Well, finding is a way. Uh, I'm, more into cultivating. cultivating. It's not to find somebody who is ready, but to find somebody who is not ready, but has the potential. Oh, that's, that's how Jesus called the disciple, right? Mm. Any of the disciples were ready when they were called. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, I don't think Jesus find them. Jesus pulled them out of their life. <laughs> right, that's what I mean. Uh, yeah, An opportunity. Yes, yes. An opportunity to challenge the young people. Do you know how to handle this, this kind of thing? When you go to work, go to an office, go to... If somebody, your boss, give you assignment to watch, to take care of a correction, you know how to do it? If you don't, learn it right here. We have a chance for you to learn. And you know, they say everybody has a story. Mm. I think some people could probably tell their story better than others. And, um, you know, how do you get those people that, that don't articulate very well, how do you get them um, to, and, and they seem, or, or they, you know, the people seem boring and mm -hmm. they really, oh, they probably don't have a story. Mm -hmm. But yeah. somehow, everybody does have some yeah. kind of story. Yeah. And so how do you, how do you help the person who cannot articulate very well? Yeah. I have a question like that related, oh. yeah. 
That's a big question too. Do we want to just pick the ones who can tell story well? 